Hi guys, Lazar here from How to Rhino. First of all, thank you for coming back to our channel. In this tutorial, we'll be modeling a Skyway shaped in a form of hyperboloid called Corporation Street Bridge in Manchester in England, designed by Hodder and partners. The modeling process will divide into three parts. The first one includes modeling glass surfaces, basically we'll make a basic shape and then divide into triangular faces. The second one includes creating structural pipes and third part will be modeling the bridge and these two polygonal shapes which connects Skyway with the surrounding buildings. So without further ado let's get started. The first step will be creating a line. So this line we will um, generate using a line container and then you can go right click and set one line. Once you create the line, we are going to evaluate it using component evaluate curve. Uh, as you can see, as you can see, uh, these divisions are a, a little bit more dense in the middle, and on its ends, it's less dense. We'll try to follow this division as on the reference picture. So using evaluate curve, we are going to reparameterize it and in the T parameter, we need values from zero to one. We can get by uh, the range of numbers. So the domain will be from zero to one. And in the end, we define how many numbers we're going to extract from the given domain. All right, so we set here 10 and the output in the output will have 11 values. So these values, We'll uh, remap using graph mapper. And for the graph mapper, I choose Bezier curve and set something like this and connect with the evaluate curve. If I turn it on, uh, you can see how division of the curve looks like now, or actually how we generate the point on the original line. Once we have the points and the tangent on the line, we can generate the circles and we'll use circle CNR component. So in the C, we'll place the center of the circle. In the N will be the normal vector of circle plane. And in the R, you should place the radius. So the tangent will be the normal of the circle. And for the radius, we can get the values again from the graph mapper. Let me show you if we didn't use graph mapper. So all circles will have the same value, but we want to get effect something like this. These two circles should be the biggest and uh, the circle in the middle should be the smallest one. That's why we'll use graph mapper, but first uh, we need to generate values from zero to one using graph mapper, again, Bezier curve, but different position of the control points of the curve. Once we have the values from zero to one, we need to remap it. So the smallest circle will have the radius three and the larger circle uh, will have the radius eight. All right, once we remap these numbers, we'll get circles like this. And now we can get the basic shape. I loft all these circles and these circles will generate the surface. So many of you can suggest, uh, okay, we can use Launchbox plugin in order to divide the surface into rectangular faces. I can show you why I didn't use it. Most related uh, division should be triangle panels B, this component. And once we divide it, uh, I will bake just to show you how it looks. You can see everything here looks fine. But when we rotate, you can see where is the seam of the surface. We get one more division, which we want to avoid because this division here doesn't exist in a real project. So we don't want to have this division. That's why I didn't use a lunchbox. The next step is to divide the circles and you can see that we get data tree. So 11 branches and each branch contains 20 items. We can visualize it here, the tree branch, and let's say show me the branch zero. 
these are the points placed in the branch 0. And we can visualize their index numbers. Uh, division, what we want to get, should look like this. All right, this is the most important step in this tutorial. Let me show you how we can get these lines and later on uh, the surfaces. You can see this is the index 0, this is index 2, this is index 4. And this part here, maybe I should take another color. All these points are based in the branch 0. These points here are placed in the branch 1, this in the branch 2, this in the branch 3, this in the branch 4, 5, 6. Alright. And I'm going to sketch the index numbers of the points from the branch 1. And you can see that we need to connect index 0 from the branch 0 with index 1 from the branch 1. Then from the branch 0, index 2 with the index 3 from the branch 1. Something like this. So basically we need to extract every second index from the branches 0 to four, six, because this process will be repeated here as well. Two will be connect with the branch three, something like this. So basically we need to extract every second branch and on every second branch, so for example, in the branch zero, we need to extract every second uh, index. So zero, two, four, six and so on. And these points will be connected with the uh, points from the branch 1, 3, 5 and so on. And these index numbers should be 1, 3, 5 and so on. To get these points in this order, we'll use a component called split tree. We need every second branch, so starting from 0, so 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, etc. And on these branches, we'll extract index numbers 0, 2, 4, and so on. So in the D, we'll place the data tree or all points. And here in the M, it is called splitting mask. And here we defined the items we want to extract. With the curly bracket, we'll place the branches. And in the square brackets, we'll place the items from the branch. So once we type uh, 0, comma, 2, comma, 3 points. This syntax, Grasshopper will understand as a pattern of numbers. So it will automatically create the list of numbers um, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on until the last number. And the same logic will be for the items as well. If I turn on, you can see that we extracted items 0, 2, 4, 6, and so on in the branches 0, 2, 4, etc. All right. And as you remember, we need to extract also the branches 1, 3, 5, uh, 7 with the items 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on. Once we have these two set of points, we can create the lines. But first, uh, we'll clean the tree. Why I'm doing this? Because we can see that we still have branches from 0 to 10. The same uh, structure of the tree as we had before splitting tree. But if we open with the panel, we can see that branch 1 doesn't consist any values, any items. And also 3, 5, 7 and so on. Once we clean the tree and set true in the E input, uh, all these null values will be removed. And you can see after cleaning the tree, we have six branches with 10 items. And the same logic we will apply to this guy as well. And then clean the tree. 
All right. Once we have these two set of points, we can create the lines between them. All right. And also, once we create the line using the same points, we want to create the lines in different direction. Maybe I should turn off this. And then again, uh, visualize these numbers. And also this one as well. You can see why the line is um, rated between these numbers. But also I want to create lines in this direction. And we can easily do this by shifting the items either from this list or from this list. In our case, I shift these guys uh, by the value minus one. So instead of connecting zero with zero, we'll connect the zero with minus one and this will be nine. Uh, one will be connected with the minus one, this is zero. Two will be connected with uh, two minus one, this is one and so on. So you can see that we shift the list, these guys by the value minus one and then create the line. All right, I will turn off this. And once we have the lines, we can uh, create the surface. So the component's called a rule surface. All right, and you can see that we need to create surface here as well. We have the lines, we just need somehow to edit position of the items. This is item zero and this is item zero from another component. And we can create the line in between them. This is one and this is one. So one of these lines, maybe I should create another color. This is uh, zero, this is one, two, and so on. And from another component, we have zero here, one here, two here. That's why we have the surface in between them. But if we shift yellow lines for the value of one, so these lines, it means that this guy will be converted into zero, this guy will be converted into one, and so on. So basically, if we do the same thing with the shifted lines, this line here will create the surface with corresponding line from another list. And we'll get surface here, also one, with one and so on. So we shift these lines for the value of one and connect with the roll surface. All right, but still we are missing these parts here. So we need to create another uh, split tree. First, we connect branch zero with the branch one, branch two with the branch three, branch four with the branch five, six with seven, eight with nine, and 10 with nine because we don't have 10 here. But in this case, we need to create the lines between one and two, three and four. It means instead of creating the pattern zero, two, we'll create the pattern two, four, and so on. So it will start from two, four, six, eight, and this, uh, the second one will stay the same. One, three, five, seven. It means it's going to create the lines between one and two, three and four, and so on. You can see that uh, instead of using 0, 2, we set the pattern 0, 4 as first two branches. And after that, uh, we can create the pattern. I will turn it on. And this one stays the same. And then, because this is the first and this is the first branch in these two trees, we will create the lines in between them. The same logic, we need to clean the tree. And this guy as well. So now we have branches 2, 4, 6, 8, 
10 and 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. If we use these two values to create the lines, we'll get lines in this area. 9 with 10. But we want to remove this part because we already created this part here. It means that we want to remove the last branch in the tree. In the first one, we need to remove a branch 10. And the second tree in this one, we need to remove branch 9. So basically remove 9 and from here remove 10. Uh, using remaining branches, we can create the lines from the remaining point inside each branch. In order to get which branches we have, we'll use three statistics and in the output P we can get all paths and also for the other tree as well. And using cal index, index minus one. This is a really cool trick. Sometimes we don't know how many uh, items we have here. I mean, we can use list length and we need to use expression x minus one in order to remove the index 4. So we can get the index 4 and then to remove index 4 from the list. This is the branch 10. But instead of using these three components, we, you can just type minus 1 and it will read as a last index in the list. Once we remove the last uh, index in the list, we remain with the branches 2, 4, 6 and 8. And here we have branches 1, 3, 5 and 7. And this text we placed in the tree branch. And the tree will be connected with, the, with this guy. If we preview this on and this guy as well, you can see that we don't have points from these two curves. All right. And once we have these points, the same logic as we had here. Connect uh, with the line and also to get the lines in this direction, we need to shift one of these two guys. We can either shift this uh, for the index one or to shift this one, this one for the index minus one. If we take the outer from these two components and connect in the A in the B of the root surface, we get this triangular surface and in order to fill these gaps again we need to shift one of these two lines let's take this one and shift for the value of one and shift at least we place in the b a stayed the same as for for this guy all right and now if we connect all these uh, surfaces we will get one b rep so let's place them all in one list uh, using merge and then flatten the list and place in the B rep join. Let me show you. We have just one open B rep. In order to get these tiny lines or tiny surfaces on each triangle, we'll take each face and offset inside and using rule surface will create this tiny uh, frame and the offset triangle will use component boundary in order to generate the last surface all right we need to deconstruct b-rep and uh, in the face we connect with the curve in order to get the outline of each face uh, one really important step is this component imported from the plugin weaverbird it's called Weaverbird's Unify Face Bindings. So we are using this component in order to get the same direction of each curve and uh, we'll get the same direction of the offset. So connect with the Weaverbird's Unify Face Bindings. Also, in order, because we need to have the planes, in each plane we will offset the curves, connect the curve with the plane and plane goes in the P. If we turn on, we have the same direction each offset and as I said we're going to connect with the roll surface in order to get these tiny tiny frames why we use craft 3 because once you offset we get each curve in the separate branch so that's why we need to use graft in order to do the same thing 
So if we flatten them and connect with the BRAP join, we have only one BRAP, open BRAP as a final output. All right, in order to get the glass surfaces, you can just connect the set curve with the surface or with the boundary surface uh, as well, we will get the same result. And this component represents uh, the glass surfaces. And that would be the first part of the tutorial. Another part of the tutorial should be creating structural pipes. Before starting doing that, let's go back to the reference picture. So if we zoom in, we can see that these pipes doesn't follow completely the glass surface. For each glass surface, we have a double, let's call it, surface of the pipes and here as well. So basically the pipes follow glass, but we have twice as less as the glass surfaces. So instead of having, let's say, two triangles, we will really have one more iteration of the division of each triangle. And here as well, you can see this is one division, but here we have something like this. So one more iteration of the division. It means instead of using 10, we'll use number 5 as a division number. In order to avoid overlapping glass surfaces with the pipes, we will need to offset this a little bit or we can just set a little bit uh, bigger number for the radius of the circles. So here we have 3 and 8 and for the circle radius from which we are going to generate the pipes. So the minimum radius will be 3.2 and the maximum radius of the circle will be 8.7. For the division of each circle, the same logic as we had before. Instead of using 20 division, we'll use twice as less number as 20. So, so basically we are going to divide by 2 and uh, that's 10 and we'll have 10 divisions. You can notice that uh, we need to use um, even numbers. So if we have 21, we will have uh, this issue here. So that's both of these parameters should be even numbers. All right, so once we have division points, we need to create lines like this. And here as well. So we can use the same logic as this one, as here, but there is an easier way because in this case we don't need to have faces, we just need the lines. This is uh, branch 0, this is branch 1, branch 2, and let's say this is index uh, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. In order to create line like this, we need to set the items from each branch. So basically the branch 1 will be offset by the value of 1, branch 2 will be offset for the value of 2, branch 3 will be offset by the value of 3 and so on. So once we offset, this point will be 0, this point will be 0, uh, this point here will be 0 and we can create the polyline using all items with the index 0. We will use shift list because the, sh the value for the shift, it's not a single number. So it's a list of numbers and the list of number we can generate from the series. So the first branch uh, doesn't have any shifting. The branch one will have shifting of one, branch two with shifting of two and so on. Using three statistics, we can uh, get how many branches we have. And we have six branches and the six will be placed in the C and it means how many numbers in the series we'll have. So the start zero, step one and six um, numbers in the series. It means that branch zero will be shifted by value of zero, branch one by the value of one and so on. Let's preview these points.
All right. And we create the polylines which will go through the points with the same index numbers. In order to create a polyline, maybe you know that the polyline will be created from the points from the same branch. So if we connect directly polyline, we will not get the result we want. So we need to flip the matrix. And once you flip the matrix, items with the same index will be in the same branch. If we preview these guys, you can see the same colored numbers are placed in the same branch. And if we connect polyline, we will get the polylines which goes through this point. All right. In order to create the lines in the opposite direction, we just need to create the same list of numbers from 0 to 5, but we need to reverse the list. So the first one will be shifted by the value of 5. The last one will be shifted for the value of 0. If we preview this on, we get the point lines in both directions. And you can see that every second pipe has quite bigger radius from the pipe next to it. So that's why we're going to use this patch. Let's say output A and output B from here uh, will be used to create the pipes with the same radius. That's why we, uh, we place them in the same uh, pipe input. And these two guys we're going to place in another pipe component with another radius. So the first one has the radius 0 0.2 and another he has the radius 0 0.05. And the last step will be creating the bridge and these two parts which connect Skyway with the surrounding buildings. Alright, I will take the line and move it um, along Z axis. So if we take a look here, the bridge it's not in the middle. So we are going to move from the center because our original line connects these two points in the center, but we need to move it along minus Z axis. And this value will take from the minimum radius and we are going to multiply by uh, some value from 0 to 1 and move it along Z axis in a negative direction. And then extract the horizontal plane on its start and the end point. First we need to reparameterize the line because the 0 is the start and 1 is the end. If we turn this on we will get two horizontal frames on the start and at the end of the point. Using component point oriented we are going to move the origins of both planes in the y direction. U represent the x direction we represent y and w represent z direction because we want to move along green line and green line is the y or the v direction we'll create a value i set arbitrarily 2.93 and also in the negative values as well so we'll create two points and also same here as well And once we get these two points here and two points here, we can connect them and extract along Z axis in order to get the fence. And then in order to create this horizontal surface and this surface, we will extrude along Z axis in a negative direction in order to get the thickness of the bridge. And then once we get these two points here and here, we can connect them by the polyline. And these polylines we can extrude along Z axis in order to get the fence. And also we can loft these two polylines in order to get horizontal surface and extrude along Z axis in negative direction. Here we set the thickness. And we have the bridge and the last part is to create this polygonal shape which connects Skyway with the surrounding buildings. Basically we take these points and create the polyline and we know that the first and the last item we need this one and this one. That's why uh, I set here 0, minus 1 and I should be these two lines. And we need to offset it 
and once we have set we will move the vector for the move we will use the direction of the original line and once we moved we can scale it the center of scaling will be the center point of each uh, polygon and once we scale we can place in the entwine component this one will be the branch zero this one will be the branch one and then flip the matrix there let me show you why we need to flip the matrix because we want to have this polyline and this polyline in the same branch once they're in the same branch we can loft in order to create uh, this surface in order to fill this gap and we can just use boundary for both of these guys and place in the b wrap first flatten them and you can bake it later same logic here but the opposite direction for the move now i would like to share something with you uh, if you are interested in having a more detailed and structured approach to learning rhino and grasshopper i invite you to send an application for rhino for artist 2.0 program the first link in the description where you will get a step-by-step -step approach to learning parametric organic modeling v-ray rendering project presentation and much much more so click on the first link in the description schedule your free one-on-one -on -one consulting call and I hope to see you inside the program. I'd like to thank all of our Patreon supporters. If you wish to have the project files of all of our YouTube tutorials, you can get them by supporting us on Patreon. Thank you guys for all the support. It helped us create even better and more valuable content for you. So until next time, take care, stay safe and see you soon. Oh, yeah.